assets. I call it a database of anything. So assets formerly known as Insight from our Mindville acquisition is available for premium and enterprise subscription. It's basically a database of anything um, that you want it to be. It allows you to map anything in Jira service management. It can handle hardware assets. Uh, some use it to map employees and customers or even licenses or patches. In addition to managing any kind of assets, you can create relationships and interdependencies between all these different objects within assets. One thing I tell all my customers that I work with is that uh, it's not just for IT assets. Many of the projects I've actually shadowed tend to be really focused on IT service management. They're bringing in things like uh, laptops, desktops, they're bringing in their infrastructure, servers, uh, routers, switches, all that. But I, I always encourage folks to look at other things as well. So I put some examples on the screen here for you behind me. Um, one thing I'm seeing a lot of success with is bringing people records in. That could be your employees. Uh, it can be uh, vendors, suppliers. Uh, skills and training is interesting too. On my team on solution engineering, we actually grade ourselves on our skills for all of our products on a scale of zero to three. So that allows us to uh, assign the right solution engineer based on our, our skill sets. So asset is tracking that information. So when one of my um, sales reps needs somebody to join them on a sales call, they can go take a look at see who has the right requirements. That's all tracked in assets. So it's very simple and easy for us to set up and manage on our team. Another common area I see folks using assets for is facilities. Tracking things like buildings, offices, warehouses, anything you can think of that's physical that you can actually track in a database. This helps with asset management because it's good to know where your assets are in a normalized way. So you can actually go right to the room level, even the desk level for where these things are located on. Uh, another one, practices and processes. So you know, in modern our modern ways of working, you find that there is a lot of documentation out there. So uh, think of your, your HR department. You've got so many policies and procedures. Wouldn't it be great for a centralized place for them to go to be able to, to find these things? And most importantly, leverage automation. So when an issue comes in for a certain type of request or inquiry, I can put that information in the request for the HR analyst to be able to see without going to try to find it. So it's a great way to, to accelerate them getting back to, the, to your employees. Uh, so let's kind of dive in first, though, to the asset and configuration management portion. So, yeah, you know, one of the things this technology is going to give you is, uh, you know, visibility of what you're managing. So it's called assets. So it just makes sense to track things like what's in stock, uh, what needs to be refreshed. Uh, you can actually use it for uh, improving and planning uh, different projects. You can track these things within assets to really help you with that uh, with that project. I've also seen a lot of hours saved when it comes to um, to your asset manager process as well. So it really helps the asset manager when it comes to um, defining out details about these different assets. It's also good for tracking things like license cost savings um, yeah, by knowing the, the available licenses that you have. So a, a lot of organizations struggle with being able to track, you know, not just what they have, but where is it installed? And being able to reconcile the difference so they know when to buy more licenses or when to not renew other licenses because they're not being used. So that's a very common use case we see in our assets system. What you're seeing here is Atlassian assets. So front and center right now, I'm looking at my object schema for people. So these are all the employees in my system. Uh, so it actually contains attributes about these individuals. I'm going to scroll down here. And I'm going to find myself because I should be here. And there I am right there, Kevin Patterson. So let's go ahead and drill in and take a look and see what an asset record looks like in Atlassian assets. So here we see some basic details about me, Kevin. So I've got my name there. I've got the organization, my department, team, status, a lot of things can be tracked here. What is important to note is you can federate multiple sources into asset to build these records. So it's not just coming from an active directory. I can pull in active directory. I can pull in HRMS. In Atlassian, we use um, Workday. So we actually use a technology called Workado to be able to uh, bring that data into our platform and populate my asset records. So just be thinking federation when you think about building these different types of records. Uh, scrolling down a bit further, you can see a bit more information. Some things can be manually entered, like my t-shirt size. So uh, my marketing team knew what size shirt to get me because in our system, my shirt is set too small. I should be a schmedium, but small seems to fit okay, so we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, so that's what a record looks like in asset. So I want to show you, though, what you can do with this information because some tools are great at kind of containing them in a database, but it's good there, but it'd be great if you could leverage it with your issues in Jira service management. So let's walk through what your, your employees can see in our help center. So a help center is where I go to, to request service from, from IT or from a, a service provider. I can report incidents or request new things. 
And I want to show you an example of how you can leverage assets on your fields here. So are your forms. So I've got a, a new service request I built called report a broken asset. So this is going to look a little different if you're not familiar with assets because you're going to see asset objects on the form here. So scrolling down, you can see which of your assets is this impacting. You know, in the past, when I logged tickets for equipment, I'd have to dig around on my laptop and find the asset tag that IT put on there for me. And I always found them tacky, so I'd peel mine off, which is kind of problematic when you have to put the asset tag in. Well, that's no longer a problem for me because with assets, I can actually hit the drop down and asset knows what I have. See, Atlassian's given me not just this MacBook Pro, but they've given me two monitors. So whatever I have a problem with, I can come here. It's Kevin Patterson. It knows who I am and it shows me my assets through filtering down to only showing Kevin's assets here. So I can pick and choose the asset I'm having an issue with. And I'll pick my laptop. And we'll just go ahead and say, uh, having an issue with my screen resolution. So just like that, I've got my details in and we can go ahead and hit send. So that really simplifies the logging process. Think about this from your end user's perspective. They, the friction's gone. I'm not hunting for asset tags. I just come here and pick the thing I'm having a problem with and go ahead and tell you what's wrong, and that goes right into the system. But it's not just good for them, it's great for your agents as well, because if we look at this from an agent's perspective, the agents are gonna get a wealth of information front and center on their screen. So here I can actually see the, the uh, incident record here, and we see the reported assets showing up front and center on my screen. I can see the asset tag here. If I drill in, I can even see attributes about the asset. Now, I could show any attributes I wanted. I keep mine very short and simple. I'm showing what the, the basic details are. Hey, it's an Apple. In fact, it's a MacBook Pro. So I see that right here on my screen. If I wanted more t details, I could drill in here, which I'll do to give you guys a, a visual of that. So here I can see how it kind of relates to things in our environment. And to the right-hand side, I can see a larger list of information about this laptop. You know, what's interesting, if we look at this, it actually tells me some important information. It tells me that, hey, the warranty expiry date happened a little while ago, back in October. So this thing is no longer under warranty. Now, wouldn't it be great if your agents knew that without drilling in? Well, through the power of automation, I can give you that. If we scroll down a little bit further on my screen, we're gonna see that Atlassian's automation checked and said, hey, I think this thing's out of date. You might want to check that warranty date. So what I'm doing here is trying to feed your agents as much information as I can to make their jobs a little bit easier, making their job much easier. So that's a, an example of an end user request or an incident going in and being supported by our asset system.